What's up, YouTube? I hope everyone's doing all right. It's been a minute since I've been able to go live. Want to uh, apologize for my two-week absence. It is the craziest time of the year. The craziest time of the year. Aeration overseed time is bananas. Yes, Mark, I have been doing more aerating and overseeding than I ever anticipated. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's been nuts. And then last weekend was my, I see my wife dancing around back there. Last week was uh, my son's birthday. My son turned five. My parents came in town. Um, <laughs> uh, my parents came in town. It's just it's been absolute bananas and uh i'm not gonna lie i'm super happy to be doing this thanks man thanks my my son noah he's uh he's all kinds of fired up we had his baptism too so he and my and my daughter so it's it's just been nuts the uh i guess kind of the kind of the cool thing is is that um i have had easily the busiest air raid overseas season i've ever had um it's been a a second sale season part two um just kind of a, a nutty sale season um and it's a little bit difficult i'm i'm having some issues with my website um so anyway it's 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 just been i'm i'm happy i'm coming to the end of my aeration overseed season um it's not that well, it's just getting a little late in the season. You know, probably Halloween will be my cutoff date, but, uh, you know, what do you do? What do you do? So, yes, it has been very, very busy, and uh, it, it looks like a lot of y'all have been too. Um, man, if you're out there and you're aerating overseas, get it while you can get it. I mean, because, it, you know, I mean, it just get it while you can get it because i've got a video coming up that i that i also recorded today where i was talking about how for us in cool season markets you know fall is the beginning of our year that's really when everything begins to take off and so um the more work we line up in the fall um you know whether they're they're new customers or everything um you know really lining those up up in the fall that means next year they're going to have bomb ass yards and uh, that way you, you see a little bit of the tail end of what their property looks like during summer. So you can tackle some of the things like perennial grassy weeds and, um, and fill in bare spots and stuff and really thicken it up, uh, you know, work on that soil structure. And that way next year, especially come spring, you know, hammer them and they just explode. So anyway, you know, you gotta, you gotta get it while y'all can get it. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing all the comments here. You gotta get it while you can get it. And, um, I've been going hard since the last week of August, uh, doing this. So, you know, here we are. Uh, I guess it's been, it's been right at four weeks. Um, I've got, you know, another, at least another solid two weeks. Um, and then I'll be going to the GIE, and then that, that little time period, I'll probably take a break, uh, get some work done on some Bermuda properties, probably get some Simazine down on those. And, um, and then when I come back from, from GIE, maybe take care of a couple of loose ends and then and be done with the seeding because I'm, I'm mentally and physically over it for the time being, but uh, I've got just this little push left. Um, <laughs> look at Eli. Don't put down too much seed. It's funny, I'm actually gonna do an entire video about that. I know it's late in the season, but um, already, I, you know, it's funny every year, you know, what what goes on in my head, a lot of times I have trouble communicating to the customer um, because a lot of times the way I don't speak, uh, the way I do speak, it makes sense to me, but to someone who does not have experience in the green industry, they may hear the way I talk and they're just like, I have no, you know, you're, you're speaking Greek. Um, and you know, one of those things is trying to explain to people how much seed to put down. And 
you know, when you're when you're looking at, at seedlings coming up, uh, you know, it's okay to have, you know, one inch, two inch spaces in between seedlings that are that are showing because uh, you know, those plants are going to mature and they may be four inches wide. They may be six inches wide. So, um, anyway, it's, it's a tough one because people will think that, well, you know, I'm, I need to put down more seed. I need to put down more seed. It's not an instant lawn. Well, the seed isn't designed to be an instant lawn, especially if you want to have a successful lawn last year. Um, you know, you've got to, you have to be very precise and specific with the amount of seed you put, put in. Um, that's, that's right, Josh Whitaker. Mark, the new Toro is the most amazing piece of equipment I've added to my fleet. Uh, as you know, I'm, I'm diehard permagreen, and, uh, and now I'm also diehard Toro. Um, that is, I should have bought one my first year. And um, in fact, I'm in so much love with the Toro that I've never offered spring aerations before. And it's not that I didn't think they were beneficial. It's because I didn't have the time to get around to them. Uh, however, with this machine, now that's something I'm going to be able to offer. And I think that's going to help my yards, uh, especially moving into next summer. Um, you know, right as we hit that break of uh, disease season, right before then, um, you know, of course, I'll be, I'll be spraying a lot of humic acid. And I can aerate those yards at the same time I'm spraying that humic acid. And I think that's really going to set me up for a successful next year's disease season. Um, getting that air to the root zone, put driving those roots deeper, uh, allowing them to breathe um, is, gonna, is gonna do wonders in terms of uh, a rhizoctonia outbreak. So anyway, I'm super excited about that Toro machine. And uh, for those of you seeding, just to reiterate, don't go crazy with the seed. Be very sparing with your seed. Uh, follow follow the, the rates of people that have been out before us. Man, I'm looking wild this morning. Yes, yes. The, the, the ROI on this Toro is, it's, I mean, it, it's, it will be paid for uh, probably by the end of, end of next spring. I could probably pay it off this fall, but uh, I'm going to stretch those payments out a little earlier and, and pad my and pad my winter money. So, um, but yeah, I mean the, it, that thing is so awesome, so awesome. It's uh, it's it's pretty amazing when you can get to a, a 10,000 square foot yard and aerate it three directions and stripe it, and you know, an hour later you're 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 done. Maybe not even an hour later, maybe. Maybe 30 minutes later, you're done, and uh, and that's just huge. That is huge. So you know, basically, if it takes me, you know, double the length of time it does to actually treat the yard. So if I could treat a uh, a 10,000 square foot yard in 10 minutes, and then I can aerate it in 20 minutes. Um, you know, obviously, when I'm doing a spring aeration, I don't have to do a triple pass. You know, probably a single would be sufficient. Double would be, you know, really doing it up. So. Uh, you know, being on and off off it in 20 minutes, I mean, that, that's nothing. I could do a whole round of nothing but spring aerations on my cool season lawns. So I'm just, I'm so happy, so happy with that machine. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's the same, maybe not the same, but it's, it's almost as close to taking that next step as adding the permagreen to my fleet was. So... For those of you out there that are that are smaller guys and and looking to make that next step, um, you know, of course, make sure you have a skid sprayer. Got to have a skid sprayer. If you have a market that dictates it, uh, not all markets are set up for ride-on machines. If you have a market a market that dictates it, get a ride-on machine. I'd steer you towards a permagreen. So before you come asking me which machine do you think is best, I will tell you. I think permagreen is best. Um, then. Uh, moving forward after that is get a ride on aerator and start and start pushing aerations because I mean it truly is beneficial I mean there's there's no way around it uh, outside of, of a, a complete and total fertility program uh, one of the next best things you can do after that culturally speaking would be to aerate and um, so anyway that keep that in mind other other small operators out there uh you know when you can when you can add that right on aerator and begin aerating yards um at your at your leisure um you it's gonna help take your turf to the next level 
because the the turf will respond to it and it'll it'll respond really well so anyway that's where where i've been that is where i've been all right mark your yard thinking about spraying quinclorac on it uh, what are you thinking about going after with the quinclorac um with it having cooled off, you probably should be okay. One thing to keep in mind is that uh, coin chlorac is pretty hard on Bermuda grass. Um, so I, w I would try and keep it pretty centralized. You know, so instead of just doing a broadcast application, I would treat just your crabgrass. Be very specific with your spot treatment of the crabgrass. Uh, because like I said, coin chlorac is very hard on Bermuda. Bermuda will, will recover from it, um, but with those being newer seedlings, and um, here we are kind of at the tail end of the growing season, um, I would just, I would be careful, try not to spray as much of the Bermuda as possible, just treat the weeds, and, uh, and you, should be, you should be good to go. I don't know why I'm getting crazy with the focus. Um, it, it's it's kind of interesting, um, the way, the way coin chlorac in, Certain Bermudas seem to respond more to it than others, too. Um, so you may want to spot treat an area first um, just, to, just to check it out and, and see exactly how that, how that responds. Uh, a lot of Kalinga. Got some goosegrass. Hit it with Dismiss. Let me know how, the, uh, how, you, how you like the Dismiss on the goosegrass. Um, one of the odd things I noticed about Dismiss was um, some of my later applications of Dismiss responded foliarly pretty well, um, burned it, and then it seemed like it, it, it maybe not 100% recovered, but maybe about like 70% recovered, and then it seemed to die within three weeks, four weeks after application. So it was just kind of an odd thing. I'm not, I'm not used to seeing uh, Dismiss uh, doing. Yeah, John B., I, I, I wouldn't use Dismiss as a pre-emergent. However, if you combine Dismiss with Prodiamine, that's a very effective pre-emergent. Um, in fact, it, it, it would be a pre-emergent that had post qualities. Um, Sulfentrazone is very persistent in the soil. It lasts in the soil a long time. I think the reseed interval on top of Sulfentrazone is something like four weeks. So, um, you may want to keep that in mind if you're if you if you're going to be seeding anytime soon uh, with whatever if you know if you're going to put perennial rye on your Bermuda grass or whatever uh, you'll probably see some injury on that perennial rye as it comes up because of the persistence of the dismiss in the soil so just just keep that in mind uh, but in terms of of, of pre effect combining prodiamine with sulfentrazone uh, I did that for the first time this year on a yard that uh, was entirely Kalinga. And so I did Prodiamine and four ounces to the acre of Dismiss. A month later, I did four ounces to the acre of Dismiss. A month later, I did four ounces to the acre of Dismiss. And uh, it was as clean as could possibly be, except for the buttonweed. The buttonweed kind of went bananas, but um, it, did, uh, it kept all the sedges out. All the sedge species were, did not come up in that yard. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I've never had good luck with uh, with dismiss on goosegrass. That's that's why I was curious. How you, what what rate of the of the sulfitrazone were you? Um, what rate of the of the sulfitrazone were you using on the on the goosegrass? Um, here's a pretty good question. I apologize. I'm not going to be able to pronounce your name. Um, if you were to take over a yard right now and had to reseed, aerate, fertilizer, and weed killer, what weed control would you use and when? Okay, so right now, uh, when I pick up new yards that are just absolute crap, um, I blanket spray them with two things, assuming they're fescue. I have to overseed them, right? Uh, so usually I'll blanket spray it with Pylex and Quinclorac, aerate it, overseed it, fertilize it, and spray RGS all at the same time. So 
it's uh, you have to bill for it. It's relatively expensive to do, um, but that is about as as complete of a cleanup that I can provide right now. Uh, most grassy weeds, a fair amount of broadleaf weeds, um, soil building properties from the from the, the uh, from the RGS, uh, opening the soil up with the mechanical aeration, getting your seed down. Um, I do it all the same day and it works phenomenally. Um, I haven't had any issues with seed coming up in the yards. I've done that. Obviously all my regular Pilex yards, um, I, I do my third application the same day I aerate and overseed, so there's no issues there. Quinclorac, um, I think it's got a one week reseed interval, maybe, I don't know. I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, I don't have any issues you know, spraying and seed coming up the same, uh, spraying the same day I seed. And having it come up it, it just it does fine uh jason clark matt what is best to kill bermuda for lawn what is the, i guess you're asking what is the best way to kill bermuda for lawn renovation um if you're going to do a lawn renovation jason um if you're going to renovate the whole thing it, it just go out with a super high rate of roundup um and try and get <laughs> yeah embrace the bermuda hashtag mark says embrace the bermuda um I would run a, just a, a wicked, because you're, you're running out of time to aerate and overseed, so I would just go ahead and um, and do a, a crazy high rate of, of Roundup. So uh, I'm trying to think of the maximum label rate. Um, I think you can go like 10% by volume uh, is, the, is the highest rate you can run. So... Um, I'd probably do something like that, or you know, maybe like uh, eight ounces to the to the to the gallon, something like that. Eight ounces per thousand square feet, just a stupid high rate. And I would also aerate and seed the same day. I do that as well. In fact, most of my most of my Roundup jobs, I, I spray Roundup the same day I aerate and overseed, and again with no issues. So the way Roundup work, it has to be absorbed foliarly by the actual leaf tissue. And the benefit of, of spraying before your seed comes up is that there's no leaf tissue to absorb that Roundup. Um, in fact, I, I've been meaning to do a test this fall. In fact, I may go ahead and do that of uh, actually soaking fescue seed in Roundup and then germinating them and uh, seeing how they do. Jacob, my man, with scooters. Jacob is, uh, Jacob is up in Illinois. He's a, uh, a fantastic entrepreneur, has a ton of information on the business aspect of lawn care. If anybody out there is new to the industry or even experienced in the industry, I watched, I watched Jacob because every time I watch one of his videos, I learn something business related that I did not know. I'm a terrible business person. I've said that before. I'll continue to say that till the day I die. Jacob, on the other hand, is a powerful entrepreneur and a great business person. Everybody check out Scooter's Lawn Care. Like, subscribe to his channel. Adsorption. Flying right now. I bet you are, brother. I bet you are. Uh, New York City for location. Fescue, rye, and bluegrass. We've used tenacity, but not very happy with it when it comes to clover. Um... Yeah, I, I, I haven't used a lot of tenacity, so I would probably ask somebody like Chris Elms about that because um, he, he, he uses a lot of it. Um, if you're dealing with, with clover right now, I'd probably spray a, 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 a low rate of three-way the same day you oversee. Um, and, yeah, you're probably not supposed to do it. You may have a little growth uh, retardation after germination, but it should pull through if you run pretty high rates of fertilizer with it. So... Um, it's one of those things you, you may want to play with um, and, uh, and just see. Uh, Jason Clark, that is confidential information. That is confidential information. Um, so I don't want to get a whole lot into it. But uh, in terms of an academy coming around, I'm just gonna throw a name out there. The Grass Factor Academy. Just think about it. It's been said it's a rumor at this point, maybe. Who knows what this winter entails? 
y'all need to y'all need to talk to Pete about it and see. Um, so anyway, just just think about it. The Grass Factor Academy. That's right, Josh. Quinclorac. Quinclorac. Hey, that's right. Quinclorac does work really well on clover. Um, eight ounces to the acre will smoke goosegrass. I don't know if I've if I've ran that rate on on goosegrass. That's probably why you're having success with it. I think as high as I've gone is six. I think just six. Um, how to prevent mushrooms popping up on the lawn? Things owners can do to prevent it if possible. Um, nothing. There's nothing you can do. Okay, so mushrooms are are solid, you know, f- you know, fungal fruiting bodies. What's up, my man? Russell Skipper down in the ATL, um, and so usually when you have mushrooms coming up, uh, usually there's a piece of buried wood, wood structure or um, root system or something in the soil that's woody in nature that's beginning to break down, and and once it has the perfect amount of you know light, air, and water. Um, you know, you get this, this fruiting body. Typically you see it in periods of higher moisture. Um, so when they, there's nothing you can do to prevent it except maybe try and dig it out, but good luck, good luck. It's impossible. So it's best to just leave it when they do come up, hit them with the mower. A four iron works really well. A seven iron works even better. Um, just get out there and, and, and have at them. Practice your golf swing, you know, tell your kid to go out there and, and chop them down. Put some gloves on, pull them, and uh, and get after it that way. I have a funny story about lawn mushrooms. I do not know if this is true. I don't know anything about it if it's true. But um, I had a customer when I was in Memphis tell me uh, he had a bunch of mushrooms come up in his yard, and his mother-in-law was complaining about them like crazy. Um, she was like, you know, oh, you've got this beautiful yard, and you get all these mushrooms everywhere. And his mother-in-law went out and began to pick the mushrooms. He said the next day, all of her fingernails had turned yellow and fell off the day after picking the mushrooms. So is that a true story? I have no idea. He told it to me like it was true. Uh, but, But he said all her fingernails turned yellow and fell off and that she was mortified. She almost had a heart attack and died. Um, so again, is that a true story? I don't, I don't know. But since that day, I've never picked a mushroom out of a yard. I've always, I've always kicked them over, uh, or just run over. <laughs> don't mess with the pixies witchcraft. My mother-in-law's coming by next weekend. Yeah, man. Start, start sm- smoking the yard with water right now. And, uh, when they come up, have her, Ever be your 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 test guinea and run out there and and start picking mushrooms. Um, another thing I wanted to tell y'all. Let's see what. Whoa, I got whoa, I got some comments up here. I got to get to. Uh, I'm a GM tech. I have been playing with diesel exhaust uh, fluid, 32 and a half percent urea and water is fert. Seems to work. Uh, Matt Davis, this is pretty interesting here. All right, so this guy's a GM tech. He I guess he works for General Motor. General Motors. So all new diesel trucks uh, have a urea tank, and this 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 tank is, is called diesel exhaust fluid, and it's 32 and a half percent urea solution with um, uh, deionized water, uh, uh, distilled water. So there's no other no other mineral content in it, just urea and distilled water. Um, he's been playing with it, using it as liquid fertilizer. Yes, this works. It is simply urea and water. So that is liquid fertilizer at its finest. Um, I would do some cost comparisons because I want to say that's like still in the dollar of gallon range. Uh, chances are you can buy bulk 4600 and, uh, and mix it with water and get that price down cheaper. Uh, but yes, it will always it'll, it'll work. It's, a, it's, it's the same thing as buying 4600 dissolving it in water and then applying it that way. So uh, that's exactly why that works. If anybody's in a pinch and you need liquid fertilizer fast, the fastest thing you can do is go to a truck stop that sells DEF fluid and buy it by the gallon and you can pump it right into your tank. All it is, even though it says diesel exhaust fluid, all it is is urea and water. So uh, liquid fertilizer readily available at the pumps now. 
You know anything about pesticide license experiments from uh, experience from one state making it easier to get one in Florida? Um, man, if you were, Jacob, if you're trying to get one in Florida, I don't think you're going to have any luck with reciprocation because Florida is uh, of you know the same level of I'll I'll say quote unquote hippie with uh, with like California. It's not hippie in Florida, but it, they're very 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 strict. Um, and so you know you're not going to be able to go. Uh, you, you, you know, for instance, like Tennessee and Georgia, Mississippi, Arkansas, uh, I think even Kentucky all have reciprocity laws. Um, but mostly, if you come from Tennessee to one of those other states, it will not uh, it will not reciprocate from from Georgia to Tennessee. Tennessee actually has stricter uh, Department of Agriculture laws than the rest of the southern states around it. So, if you have a Tennessee license, it will transfer to all the other southern states but not vice versa. Um, and I think it's the same thing with Florida. If you have a Florida license, uh, it will transfer to other states, but none will transfer to Florida. The only thing I know about it is that it's, it's difficult. It's very, very, very difficult. So, yeah. Um, anyway, it, uh, yeah, man, I, I, in fact, I don't know really anybody in that area that I could steer you towards to talk to about the licensing exam. Um, I know they've got a lot of bizarre rules. I mean, they have blackout periods as far as when nitrogen can be applied. Um, and I, I want to say they even limit the amount of N that can be applied per year and the amount of N that can be applied at one time. Uh, because again, you're going to be dealing with a soil structure that is basically like a golf green. I mean, it's all sand. And so anything you apply at the surface is going to move through that soil just extremely, extremely fast. Um, so zero CECs to speak of. It's all sand. So, um, yeah, yeah, it should be tough. That's right. The lawn care nut could tell you. Um, although I don't know if he ever sprayed lawns uh, professionally in, in Florida. He may have. I don't know 100% though. Mark says, got some next RGS in the 1800 and 002 from Green County Fert last week. Sprayed it on the yard, and I'm seeing worm castings for the first time in years on my lawn. That's pretty interesting. Um, that's pretty interesting, Colonel. Why you're seeing worm castings, I don't know. Uh, if I had to guess uh, the, the humic portion of it, maybe drawing a little bit of oxygen to the surface, and that's what's causing uh, microbial activity move that way and and probably things like earthworms and stuff uh, going with it. So pretty pretty interesting pretty interesting deal there. Um, that's also going to be a lot of carbon at the soil surface and that carbon is going to help help that uh, soil surface uh, increase with the amount of, of, of uh, oxygen in the soil surface. I did a lawn renovation two weeks ago, and I have a section where I hauled in dirt. That section shows no signs of seed germination. I put down Morganite when I seeded. Is this a bad sign? Uh, no, Brad, no. Um, to me, what it sounds like, I see this so much when you're dealing with bare dirt areas. Um, if you do a kill off and you've still got um, you know, dead vegetation on the surface and you know you agitate that, the grass will come up in that first because it's got that layer of protection from the dead vegetation where if you're on a bare dirt scenario, you don't have that layer of protection. And a lot of times what happens is it's hard to keep that, that moisture at that soil surface. So um, again, I was talking about the last video I did, you know, 7 a.m., 11 a.m., uh, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Every four hours during the sun up period, uh, to keep it, <laughs> there's my son somewhere right there. Um, every four hours during the sun up period to keep it moist. That way you'll get the, the germination because if that soil surface completely dries out, if that seed dries out before it has the chance to germinate, then it's not going to germinate. So uh, you have to make sure, hey son, you have to make sure you keep it wet at, at all times. Um... Eli says, so what's the deal with Roundup? Is the EPA going to ban it? Uh, no, Eli, they're not. Um, Roundup has, okay, so it's, it's kind of interesting, the, the whole, Daddy. 
uh, take on Roundup is, okay, so glyphosate itself was the first thing that was blamed during the Roundup dilemma. Uh, everybody was coming out and saying, oh, you know, glyph glyphosate is actually much more dangerous than they initially anticipated. They ran their tests. Well, it turned out glyphosate wasn't so dangerous. Then it was one of the inert ingredients in the Roundup um, formulation that was causing the issues. Um, then they ran the test on that, and they said, yes, it is, but it's at an unbelievably high rate. And then they're saying, well, it's persistence um, in the soil or persistence in the crops or persistence in the, in the grazing animals that are causing the issues. So is... Um, Okay, is is Roundup going to be pulled off the market? No, it's it's too ingrained in our society right now to be pulled off the market. It's uh, it's it's here. It's everywhere. They're not going to get rid of it. It is uh, actually one of the safest options we have. Uh, Roundup itself is actually uh, on the reduced risk herbicide list uh, for the for the United States government. Um, so in, in terms of safety and toxicity, it's, it's unbelievably low. Uh, so no, they're not going to pull it off the market. The problem is, is that you've got these, there was a, a professor, a biology professor, no, I'm sorry, a computer science professor in MIT who released a, uh, a study in a non-peer-reviewed journal that said, if we continue to use glyphosate, 50% um, of our children by the year 2020 uh, will have autism. And the issue with articles like that is this guy is a MIT PhD computer science professor. Uh, he has no background in biology, no background in chemistry. It's computer science, uh, programming, coding, engineering. And he published this article in a, in a journal uh, that's non-peer-reviewed, so not exactly steadfast science going on there. Beyond that, he, his peers uh, from MIT and other universities um, actually spoke out against him, uh, saying that what he was doing was bad science. So, um, you know, I just I don't foresee Roundup going anywhere anytime soon. It's it's just too much here. Um, Let's see here. Shoo. Shoo! Saying I'm happy with the results. What's your experience with your app so far in customers' lawns? Um, Colonel, I mean, I'm having... It, it, everything was really killing it, and then we got super dry. It's kind of an odd thing. I'm working on a video series right now. It's going to be a long-term video. Um, I've got to post before and after pictures, but uh, you know, I was using Screaming Green earlier in the season. I wash my hair. <laughs> I was using Screaming Green earlier in the season, and I had this one particular daddy, daddy, new construction yard that um, I could not get to green up with Screaming Green. I had put down two pounds of in from the Screaming Green. Um, not a whole lot of color response. I was like, well, you know, let me test the soil. This fall, we'll get around to to doing the the remediation part of it. Tested the soil, not a whole lot that was exciting. A little low in the pH, maybe like a 5.8. Uh, you know, off the charts in P, off the charts in K. Uh, fairly deficient in micronutrients. Still nothing for me to get excited about. Um, you know, off the chart in, in, um, in iron, but fairly low in calcium. So anyway, that being said, my next application, I was going to run RGS and a half pound to N. So I ran RGS and a half pound to N. I came back to aerate and overseed it three weeks later, and this yard had filled in so much, it looked like Bermuda the way it had spread. It was amazing. Um, so to say I'm happy with my results from RGS, yes, I'm very, very, very happy with it. I, it continues to surprise me. So I like that part of it. Uh, next to RGS, what's the next best thing we can do to help build the soils over the winter months? Perry, it's a good question. Um, 
Um, the the best thing you can do to build your your soils over the winter the months, and the best thing you can do to build your soils. Hang on, son. You're gonna have to go inside, buddy. Okay. Can I finish? Um, would be to push as much growth from your from your grass as you can. Um, by developing that root system between now and winter time, um, that root cycling effect will occur where you'll get deeper roots. Uh, some of them will begin to die as those die. That will be deposited in the soil as organic matter. And, um, and so you basically you create a topsoil environment out of uh, substandard soil. So the best thing you can do besides RGS, aerate it, uh, feed it very aggressively, uh, and you know, make sure you're 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 maximizing your growth with you know a good biostimulant like humic acid and kelp. Um, let's see here. What's up, Pete? My man, my man. Man, I got to get caught up on this right here. What are your strategies, apps for the semi-dormant dormant period, October, April, uh, on a Bermuda lawn? Uh, Barney, uh, applying uh, pre-emergence in the fall. So, you know, uh, prodiamine and simazine are two great pre-emergents you can put down in the fall. Um, before you lose all your color, probably run some, some high rates of potassium because potassium helps roots. Uh, no, not really, but if you're deficient in potassium, it's all right to go ahead and get it down then. Um, and then as you move into January, February timeframe, um, you know, you can go ahead and begin putting down your pre-emergent again. Uh, so, you know, uh, prodiamine, simazine, atrazine, all those are good to go ahead and, and apply any post-emergence you want to uh, while it's while it's dormant. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I can think of, of, you know, five solid applications there. In September, prodiamine, October, simazine, November, uh, calcium, Bertillon, or uh, soggy cow, something of the sort, soggy cow with humic. Um, and then uh, in February, prodiamine, uh, you know, March, April, prodiamine again. Um, and then if you want to sprinkle in an application of uh, three-way or uh, tri-power or something in there, um, you know, you're, you're good to go. Uh, high rates of kelp and humic acid. Do you know the difference between fulvic and humic acid? I got some from a hydroponics place. It seems to be both. Okay, so fulvic acid is a smaller particle sized humic acid. Uh, fulvic acid is actually so small in particle size that it can be absorbed by leaf tissue. Humic acid cannot. Uh, it's debatable whether or not it can. Uh, but fulvic acid is a much, much smaller particle size in comparison to humic acid. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I love everything that's good results from the humic and kelp apps. Yeah, me too, man. Me too, Chris. Roundup is just as safe as Dow 24D. That was one of the first herbicides used commercially. I see Roundup falling under the umbrella of tools that we need and it won't go away. Uh, yeah, in fact, I would argue that Roundup is even safer than 24D. Um, you know, 24D is just a derivative of Agent Orange, which was 245T. Um, so I, I would argue much more that that I would rather use uh, Roundup than than 24D. T-Zone, where can I put it down on new grass to take care of violets? Four week old grass, two mows. Um, I would probably give it maybe another two weeks, John Porter, and then go to town with it. Uh, if you're going after violets, I would just use straight triclopyr this time of year instead of triclopyr and sulfentrazone. Not really any need for the sulfentrazone unless you're in a hurry. Uh, look at Caesar. Thanks, man. Uh, this drought does suck. Steven, you're not kidding. The drought is awful. It's driving me crazy. It drives me bananas. Pete, please post some more videos. Throw her down. Scope, scopophobia, back in. I just tuned in. What's up, turf nerd? What's up, my man, David? I still want David Watkins to do a YouTube live for me. Y'all, I'm thinking about changing the time I do this show into later in the day because it seems like I always have something going on with my family at 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm thinking about doing later afternoon shows. So I'm thinking a 7 o'clock start time on Sunday afternoons is going to be much better for me. 
And judging by the viewer, viewership, it, it seems like more of y'all are able to tune in than two. Uh, speaking of the Roundup issue, what's the deal with Dicamba issue in Arkansas? Steven, this is a very sensitive topic to me, and I get so angry talking about it. And the reason being is everybody for years has known how badass of a product Dicamba is. It's extremely volatile. Um, it is uh, it's extremely dangerous in, in, in terms of... Uh, the effects it has on on woody tissue plants, um, and and so whatever legislation that took place and and whoever drew up the design for them to put it in crop rotation for soybeans and allow it to be sprayed with the potential of influx of, of temper with temperature spikes and stuff going on, um, you know it's not a surprise to me that this is happening. This is not a shock to me. I could have told you this was going to happen a long time ago. I watched it happen in Mississippi when people would spray fields with dicamba. Trees in the surrounding neighborhoods would drop at alarming rates. So the problem is, is that it got put into some sort of plan, some legislative plan that Monsanto helped draft alongside Congress. And it now it's turned into a political piece to turn it against um, against Monsanto because Congress can't take ownership for their part of it because they relied entirely on Monsanto and Monsanto saying, well, yes and no, but you can't really point the figures at us because y'all are the ones that pass the laws. And so anyway, it's, it's turned into a nightmare. It's, it's crap. Really. It should have never have, have gone into effect. I mean, again, dicamba is super old, super, super, super old school. Why is it just now being talked about? It's killed trees and everything else imaginable for years and years and years and years and years. Banville and all the other uh, dicamba products are, are well known for their ability to kill trees fast. And, uh, and so, you know, farmlands are getting smoked. That's what happens when you use a product that, that can volatilize really quickly. Um, I get my potassium from bananas. My grass doesn't eat bananas. Um... Yeah, you can get your potassium. Your grass probably doesn't eat bananas, but I'm sure it might. I'm sure it might. Throw some out there, and with time, as it breaks down, the grass may be able to utilize the potassium from the banana. How do you use triclopyr two applications to finish off the violets? Yep, that sounds about right. Uh, in Illinois, you can fall in a crack in the lawn. It's so dry. <laughs> Uh, will fulvic acid burn turf? Uh, probably not at label rates. Uh, probably not. Later is better for you, David Watkins, and that means I'm doing it, dang it. I'm doing it. Next fall, I would like to buy yours and Pete's seed blends. Can you ship in uh, what you think a 50-pound bag would cost? I honestly have no idea, Matt Davis. You'd have to talk to my supplier on that. I would call them at Dickens Turf uh, and Landscape Supply. You have to call the Knoxville location. The Nashville location does not have it. Only the Knoxville location has my seed blend. Uh, will I be able to put down a pre-emergent on my new lawn this fall? Colonel, probably. I would just hold off. Don't do it. Just leave the pre-emergent off of it this fall and, uh, and then just get aggressive with your post-emergence next year. Uh, can you put humic acid when you reseed? Yes, Mike, I'm spraying all my yards that I seed with humic acid and kelp at the same time. What would you suggest for lawn leveling Bermuda lawn? Um, I would suggest sand. Yep, Colonel, there it is. Mark said it. Sand. Um, is there anything better than sand? I don't know. I don't know of it, but uh, I would use uh, I would use sand. Phil Cagle says, "Why not Simazine and Monument?" Uh, Mark, I would not put Simazine on on your Bermuda um, until next spring. So. Maybe, maybe uh, you know, like March of next year, you know, do a blanket application of, of Monument. But ah, even then, I'd be real hesitant not till next year to do the, do the Simazine. Uh, compost and river sand blend is best for leveling Bermuda. There you go. Take it from the man himself down in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, man, I... The dicamba thing is just, it's, it's, it's complete and total crap. And now it's turned into something that's 100% politically motivated. And it, it just just makes me sick to my stomach. Um, I don't know how many of y'all have ever used just straight up dicamba. We use it a lot on Centipede Yards, a product called Banville. And, I mean, it's just, 
It's a badass product. It works awesome. Works awesome. But I mean, everything on that label is just like warning, 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 warning. This will volatilize and kill shit. This will volatilize and kill a ton, a ton of stuff. Stuff you did not want it to kill. How do you know when to start and stop T-Nex PGR applications? Is it based on temperature, hybrid, Bermuda lawn? Um, uh, you, I mean, I guess you don't. Um, I'd say once you're 100, at 100% green, go ahead and start them. Um, stop them when your soil temperatures drop, you know, I'd say probably down to 60, 60 degrees. Once, once soil temperatures get down to 60 degrees, there's really no point in continuing. Uh, with your PGRs because your your Bermuda is not really going to grow anymore. Let me let me see if I can get into some light here. It's getting dark outside. Um, the other thing too is um, you can go to Greencast online. Um, Greencast online is a website that Syngenta put out that is specifically for Soil temperatures, you can monitor soil temperatures there. And so it's a it's a great little tool uh, to know exactly where you stand uh, through the course of the year as far as your, your soil temperatures are concerned. So Greencast online, check your soil temperatures. Um, I put down, oh, here, Philip, also the other thing with T-Nex 2 is your daylight hours. So once you once you get into August, uh, September time frame, I mean, you're going to be down three hours from you know in july three hours of daylight a year oh, i'm good off this light right here my sweet wife bringing me another light out here to help um once you lose that much daylight hours you know you're not gonna really be growing anymore so i probably wouldn't do any applications after like after like august time frame. well that's at least here um, let's see. I put down RGS with overseeding, aeration fertilizer after watching your video. Looking forward to the results. Water bill is going to be a killer, though. I'm right there with you, Jason Clark. I'm doing a renovation on my front yard. There's more video stuff I'm doing. And, uh, it is, uh, so dry. So dry. It's nice in the spring to time your pre-emergent. I'm not crazy enough to have grow lights on my lawn. I'm not. I'm not either. I'd never put grow lights on my lawn. Never. Never, never, never. My backyard is coming along awesome. I'm actually doing a video of that this week uh, because I'm I'm cutting it off uh, as far as what I've accomplished with it. It's not, it's not going to get any better than it is right now. I got to about 95% coverage with my Bermuda grass, and it is... My mind is blown. Um, it's it's awesome. It's awesome. So I'm gonna do a little bit of leveling over winter, and uh, and I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it next year. But I'm I'm definitely gonna have fun with it. In my backyard. I mean, it just did. It did great. It did great. Uh, can't afford to spread malorganite on one and a half acres. What else can you recommend? Cow manure. Uh, Yvette, yeah, cow manure is fine. Um, okay, Yvette, Here's here's kind of the thing. You know, organic. Fertilizers like malorganite are fine. Good stuff, right? The trick to an organic fertilizer is the amount of carbon in it. So an organic fertilizer is going to be about 30% carbon. Um, so by weight, that is, uh, that's a fair amount of carbon that's going down to the soil. Plus it has a very, 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 very minute uh, nutrient content. Not a lot. Very small. Um, what you can do instead of doing a uh, quote-unquote organic malorganite type application is go get some humic acid, a high-quality humic acid. Um, I like the RGS, the GreenCountyFert.com, uh, Green County, green with an E on the end. They don't pay me anything. I just love their product. Um, and you can apply a synthetic fertilizer and the Green County Fertilizer RGS product at the same time uh, humic acid is going to be 70% carbon, so you're going to be getting down uh, enough carbon to mimic the effects of an organic fertilizer that's going to be a heck of a lot cheaper and uh, just as efficient. So uh, the trick to an organic fertilizer is carbon. Uh, so whatever, whatever you can do to cheapest acquire that carbon, 
that's how to go about it. You know, cow manure, uh, compost, whatever. What it all breaks down to is carbon. Carbon's the carbon's the secret. Um, let's see here. Pete's cracking up the ground. Um, that is not. That's why Pete's got an aerator, so he doesn't worry about that stuff. Got to run. Keep up the good work. Hey, thanks, Jason Clark. Thanks, Jason Clark. Anything I can do in the spring for quack grass besides hand painting it with Roundup? Uh, it seems like there's something you can do with quack grass. Um, I'm not thinking of it off the top of my head, though. So let me do a little research. Scopophobia, if you don't mind, send me an email. Daddy, it will remind me to look it up. Fish. All right, son. My son needs another fish. I don't know what that means. Aerovator had trouble the other day. Wow. That's pretty brutal. I put some in my backyard. Oh, phone call. Uh, put some on my backyard and was totally amazed by the increase in foliar generation on the tree to compare to untreated crowns. Huh. No kidding. Anderson's has a human coated urea. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, Anderson does. It's unbelievably expensive. It's crazy expensive. Um, so if you decide to use it, good luck. I can't afford it. Hey, love your channel. I've been learning whatever, uh, whenever I'm not cutting. I'm studying for my Missouri pesticide license and hope I'm on the right track. Lots of guys are not licensed and they still spray. Bryant's, good luck, man. Good, 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 good luck. Uh, performance lawns, <laughs> my man. JW down there in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. The man who has an incredible video on operating uh, a slit seeder. If you've never done it, check out Performance Lawns, Inc., uh, his YouTube channel, and uh, I gave it to my employee the other day uh, to help him learn how to use a slit seeder for the first time. So, um, my thoughts on Air 8 product from Green County? I don't know, Josh. I've never used it. Looking at the um, the label, uh, so it's got a higher rate of humic acid in it, and it also has a higher rate of potassium hydroxide in it. So potassium hydroxide in terms of uh, its uh, chemical use in turf grass, not super familiar. Um, it's incredibly basic. Um, and so in the event you have acidic soil, there may be a bit of a reaction that takes place there or uh, you have soil that is uh, you know, high in phosphorus. It may have an interaction with that. I don't know the chemical reactions that take place there. but. Is the potential therefore to work? Yes. Will it replace mechanical aeration? No. Will it supplement in between mechanical aerations? Possibly. I just don't know enough about it. Uh, what do you like to use as top dressing when seeding a lawn? Uh, scopophobia, I don't like to use anything uh, to top dress when seeding a lawn. Uh, I like to uh, basically bust up that top layer as much as possible into like a fine powder. Um, I think you'll, you can see a lot of that in Pete Denny's videos, check those out and, uh, and then cover it with its natural existing, uh, native soil and then irrigate it to come in, uh, uh, top dressing it to cover a seeded lawn is just, it's overkill. in in my opinion, I've never had it outperform top dress with a, with a foreign product as I have, you know, basically top dressing it with native soil. No, it does the same thing. Mr. Grass Factor, Mr. Orban Guerra, what's up, my man? Happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday to you. Cheers. If you like a Coke Zero. Um, Court Gibson. Channel's great. What can I do to prevent poe I just overseed about three weeks ago and did some spot seeding today. Should I try a pre emergent about two weeks? Corey, that's going to be your best bet, my man. Uh, appreciate the kind words, but yes, that is going to be your best bet. Uh, give it another couple weeks. Make sure you've got uh, uniform germination throughout, and if you're happy with the amount of uniform germination throughout, remember, do not overseed. Those plants are going to swell and take up a lot of space. Sorry, I didn't mean to get so aggressive there, but um, once you're sure that you're going to have uniform um, uh, uniform germination throughout, um, then yeah, yeah, get down your pre-emergent. You may see a little bit of stunting take place, so uh, don't be scared to use biologicals. Uh, you know, get your carbon supplements in there. Uh, it may have a little bit of effect on the pre-emergent, may not. Uh, that's debatable, um, but that's going to be your best defense against Poa annua. 
Secondly, it would be get your grass as thick as possible this winter before um, before the poa has a chance to really set in. So, uh, if uh, you know, I really, really slam my yards after I aerate and overseed them to get them as thick as possible, so that way um, I don't have to worry about the poa. Um, any suggestions for controlling nimble wheel or is glyphosate it? Uh, for nimble wheel, uh, either Pilex or Tenacity. Um, if you're in warm season grass, uh, Monument and Three Way mixed together does pretty well uh, also. Um, Turf Nerd agrees. Hey, 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 thanks, David. I appreciate the agree there. Um, I'm sure I probably overseeded. I was a bit heavy handed when I threw it down. Yeah, most, most of us are. Most of us are. Uh, so if you're good with the amount of germination you got, yep, go ahead, get your, get your pre down and, uh, rock and roll with it. And when, once you get your pre down too, I mean, start slamming that thing with, you know, ammonium sulfate, urea, you know, just high, high, high nitrogen and get it to fill in as much as possible this, this, this fall before, before spring rolls around. Um, I skipped overseeding this year to put down pre for Poa annua. There you go. There you go. You're welcome, Brian. You're welcome. If you ever need help with anything, don't hesitate to shoot me an email. That's what I'm here for. This is my, this is what I do. This is what I do. Corporate HQ, what's up, bruh? What is up? Scopophobia slamming the nitrogen this fall. Yep, me too. Me too. Without any hesitation or reservation, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be slamming jamming them this fall. High carbon, high everything. Mark, you did not have to do that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Really unnecessary. I really appreciate it, though. Everybody, I'm going to call it. It's uh, That's 56 minutes and 42 seconds. It is going on 7.51. I've got to put my kids to bed here shortly. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody for tuning in. I'm going to have a lot of... Uh, going to have a lot of videos coming out over the next two weeks because... Um, I got a lot to get out before the GIE. So anyway, I really, really just ran out and took my soil temp. It was 62. There you go, Wayne. Um, I've, I've, I can't wait to see everybody at the GIE. Again, if you're there, please come see me. Pete and I are going to be hanging out a lot at the GIE. So uh, not only will you get to meet me, you'll get to meet uh, Pete as well. And uh, so again, thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all for tuning in. I so much appreciate it. And uh, until then, y'all have a good one. Take care.